I think that's it. What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining us today for another episode of Ricardo Sturdivant's Tuesday Fields live on the Reinventing Network. Today's a pretty cool show. We've got Jason and Medusa in the house, so we'll bring them on in just a couple minutes. If you guys are watching us on YouTube, Facebook, or the Reinventing website, let us know that these streams are working in the chat or tag a friend who would like to join us. You guys can check out some of our Reinventing weekly drawing groups and shows on our network as well. Every Sunday, we have Jason Leeser with his Skill Building Sunday Drawing Group. Monday mornings is Drawing for Tattooers with James Wisdom, followed by the Tattoo Weekly at 11 a.m. Monday nights are the Evolution classes led by Guy Aitchison. Tuesday mornings at 10 right here is Ricardo Sturdivant's Tuesday Fields. Wednesdays at noon is a Tattoo Now show, followed by the Reinventing Business course bi-weekly at 1. Every Thursday is Tattoo Collecting 101, and then we start it all over again on Sunday. All of these events can be found on our homepage if you scroll down, as well as our YouTube and Roku channel. The homepage is really nice. If you scroll down to the bottom where our calendar is, you can click the Zoom link to join in any of these live drawing groups. Before we get started today, let's say thank you again to our sponsors for helping us push out this cool content to you guys every day for free. We've got Alex's World Tattoo Events, giving us the largest, most comprehensive resource for tattoo events in the world. You can find hundreds of event listings at worldtattooevents.com. Also, thank you to Raw Pigments with their acrylic-free inks that have been used by artists around the world. You can support Reinventing by using code REINVENTINGTHETATTOO at checkout for 10% off your order. Also, thank you to DLIES Pro for helping artists and clients protect their art, as well as our affiliates Fireside Tattoo, The Apprenticeship Diaries, and Eco-Friendly Tattoo Supplies.com. Lastly, I want to mention that our second trimester is wrapping up of the Reinventing Evolution. We've got other um, really cool opportunities available on our website for learning through the canon that you guys should definitely check out. But without any further ado, I think we have a few sweet faces that would like to grace us with their presence, including quarter size blue What's up? How's it going? How are you guys doing today? Doing all right. Good. Yeah. No issues, no complaints. Feeling good. Woke up. I you saw know, you I, posted something about um and what were you up to yesterday that you put you shared something about working on art or someone did? Prince? Oh yeah. yeah oh you're yeah. Doing yeah, some yeah. Kind of so I was over with uh, my one of my best friends in the world, Ian Chapin. Uh, over at Yellow Rose Tattoo in North Hills or Glenside, Pennsylvania. Um, Ian runs a super traditional shop, like super traditional, bold, bold line, single line, like very old school colors. He does some of the cleanest work I've ever seen. And um, I went over there to hang out with him for a little while. Uh, yesterday, technically, the studio was closed, but I mean, when you're friends with a guy that owns it, you just call him and you're like, yo, let's hang out. He's like, okay. And he opens the door. Um, but we got together to discuss some prints he wanted to get made. And we went over some of his insane vintage flash collection that he wants to uh, digitize and archive and potentially in the future make some prints. Uh, but he's got like some old Milton Zeiss flash. He's got a um, couple of original acetates that we were staring at for a while. He broke out some of his collection from the, I think it was the Paul Rogers Institute from uh, San Francisco. So like nice. sitting there looking at like original cardboard prints of these flash designs that are signed by the original artist, you know, and discussing how to best preserve them, how to best display them, what to do with the originals. Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So it was, uh, it was a fun day. Is that what Maybe. you were expecting? Or was that kind of like a surprise? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I knew that was what was going to happen when we got together. Um, we always have a tendency to get together and like, go over like tattoo hist historical tattoo stuff. I mean, we were both super tattoo nerds. Like we geek out over that stuff. Like you right, can't so. you can't put a vintage machine in front of us and expect us not to completely nerd out. Right. <laughs> we'll sit down and we'll <laughs> analyze like the thread count on the screws. Right. It's that bad. Um, but I knew that was gonna happen. So it was it was a very productive day. It was a blast hanging out with them. Um 
Yeah, it, it always is too. So you looked like a kid in a candy store in the picture, to be honest. You did. Like I for agree. Real, knowing you, yeah. I could see that you were really happy and excited. Well, I was holding stuff. vintage limited edition, very rare copies of Tattoo Flash. Oh, nice. So, I mean, to actually physically hold that piece of tattoo history in your hand is just. Especially Whew, it's, it puts you on another level. You are like a kid in a candy store. I mean, you got to think about the years and the years that have gone by and all the things that have changed since then. And looking at the foundation of it all right there in your hands, you know. He was like, I don't know, dude. I don't know if I should like make copies of these and like sell the copies because there's only like four known sets of this in the world. And I'm like, dude, no, no. Yep. The more rare they are, the more they're going to hold their value over the time. So, you know, definitely I mean, don't like, want to put production out there. But at the same time, you can't help but want to share that with the world. Yeah. I think I'd make copies that kind of have those put out on display and then have the originals put away somewhere. You know what I mean? And yeah. break them out on like a special occasion, like a fine wine. Exactly. With some like some nice Chianti and some fava beans, you know, exactly. on special occasions, only on special occasions. Right. That's what I was talking to him about. So we talked about a way to archive them and reproduce them uh, so that he could have copies of them displayed and keep the originals as preserved as humanly possible, kind yeah. of tucked away, you know, right. out of direct sunlight. Um, in yeah, exactly. an acid free environment, yeah. So, thanks for coming on, James. James, morning, gang. Good morning, sir. James, yay. Hey, Medusa. Hi, I tried to make your show yesterday, but I didn't. I barely made it myself, so I actually. <laughs> I actually like put in a solid attempt to make your show. And then I like woke up and I was like, why the hell is my alarm going off at 5 30 AM? I just got to bed and I went back to sleep and it wasn't until when I like woke up, woke up for reals later. Where I was like, Oh yeah, <laughs> that was so that I could see James's show. <laughs> no worries. Uh, so we have a couple of uh, people coming in from the chat. What's up, creature? Always good to hear from you. Amber, uh, the link is on our website if you can join. Uh, always great to see you. Um, I will mm -hmm. update it, maybe check again in just a couple minutes. Uh, Gabe says, copies of art out to collectors often is what makes the originals more valuable. That's a good point. Uh, okay, nice. Yeah, nice. I'm thinking about it like that. So Amber, I'll get you set up now, checking in in like a minute. I got Amber yeah. in the house. Almost. You know, you know, what's funny is like uh, me and my buddies here at the shop, we were actually talking about the idea of getting flash racks back in here again and actually like going through and buying some old Cherry Creek and just filling it with nothing but Cherry Creek stuff, dude. Like, uh, that would be amazing. We, uh, you got to do it then. I know I'm, I'm trying to talk them into it. I was like, I already have, I was like, I'll put half of it down. Like I'll put half of the money down. You guys chip in and like fill up the rest of the half and let's just fucking make this happen dude <laughs> there's something glorious about that you know what i mean have you guys had, had a chance to tattoo a lot of cherry creek in your day i have <laughs> yeah i certainly have oh yeah do you guys like it or hate it or what were you were you over it by the time it was dying off and this is Vimeo enterprise so i was always a big fan of the um the bullseye monster collections and they would come out with a new collection every year. So it wasn't exactly cherry Creek, but bullseye Flash would come out with like, they'd get 10 artists together and they would each put out a brand new set of flash every year. Right. In some years they would mix the artists up, but it was always different stuff. You never really knew what you were going to get or who the artists were going to be that year until you got the flash set. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was always an adventure, you know, so, but yes, I did make plenty of money off of Cherry Creek in my day. Um, but I swear if I have to do another bald eagle tearing through skin <laughs> with an American <laughs> background, I swear someone's going to get hurt. 
No way, dude. Or like Come the on, butterfly man. with like the tiger eyes in it. The tiger like, eyes. I, yeah. I probably with the tribal that coming off the sides. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite was the 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 religious theme stuff. Like the smiling Jesus one was the best, dude. Oh God, he's yes. like he's like a total <laughs> like hey, you know, he's just like super chill. Like, hey, it's almost like Buddy Christ, even, you know. We just got rid of our flash. Well, not rid of, we put them in storage, but took down our flash racks at our shop. Oh, but they like they had all of that stuff. Like, I mean, well, the own the original owner of the shop who still technically owns the shop, she started tattooing in 83. Nice. So, Love it. Yeah. And as a female tattooing in 83, that's ballsy. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, OK, cool. I think um, I see scary. what you did there. <laughs> yeah she's a uh, uh, she that's blueberries um, <laughs> look at the size yeah. of those blueberries <laughs> yeah. my god but, uh, uh yeah we'd like just put our flash racks into storage but yes it had all of that on yeah. it um but yeah we n- nobody was interested in getting those tattooed and nobody has been for a few years so yeah, that's why yeah. we tucked them aside for now. <laughs> See, to me, tattoo flash was an integral part of learning how to tattoo. Yeah. Right. Because the people that I originally apprenticed with were frugal, to say the least. So they would see if they could cut a deal to buy all of the tattoo flash mm-hmm. without the line work. And then guess whose job it was to draw the line work for it. Oh, yeah, bro. The apprentices. Bingo. Yeah. So as, as much as I like to try to tailor things to be unique for everyone, if it wasn't for Tattoo Flash, I would have never gotten to the point that I met today. So I have I, the most respect for that. I kind of wish that I could just make flash sheets and sell those to shops. So do it, you know, but uh, yeah, that's that's kind of a dead thing. Nobody buys flash sheets anymore. Now know, every artist they, makes they their own really flash funny, sheet. creative, like really funny things that that I think are really yeah. unique about yourself that you could probably get away with that. I agree. While, like, so <laughs> while you are correct in a sense, like most people aren't out there buying flash sheets. Uh, to actually hang up in their studio to like tattoo the designs off of you would be absolutely floored at how many people are buying flash sheets and collecting them as original works of art because think about it like this right to design a successful sheet of tattoo flash you have to have a really great composition and you have to make sure that everything flows well with the other subject matter that's on there right? You have to have things placed in a way that is going to be visually appealing. You need to make sure that things are on the same kind of a theme. So there is an art to tattoo flash as well when it comes down to composition, color palettes, and things of that nature. So that in and of itself is a form of art. Yeah, but in order to like make a successful flashy, I definitely need to actually wake up in time for James Wisdom's Show drawing for tattooers. Very helpful on Medusa. Monday you morning. Do you should James do that. Are- you should definitely join James Wisdom's drawing for tattooers Monday mornings. James, how do you I feel was, so far? Um, how many I episodes was- has there been? Because I keep seeing more and more. How do you, how are you feeling with everything? Um, well, yeah. Thanks for thanks for the plug. Uh, <laughs> it's it's really <laughs> it's uh it's it's amazing. Um, and to be honest, I think uh. It feels really, um, I, I guess it feels really comfortable in a certain way. Like once it starts, I'm really uncomfortable before I hit the go live. You know what I mean? I get really nervous and I'm, you know, I'm like, I'm totally in my head. But then as soon as we're drawing, as soon as we're, you know, as soon as we're talking about stuff, um, then it feels like, I don't know, then it feels, it feels like what we're supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? We're supposed to be, uh, you know, working on our work, uh, you know, enjoying each other's company. And then also like, um, uh, I don't know, just, just, uh, uh, like being community, I guess, you know what I mean? And so, uh, that's really what makes it is, you know, people that, 
people do show up and then, you know, some people watch it. And um, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm honored by it. And then of course, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in the company of you all as well. And I think that for me is uh, it's, it's, it's really quite humbling. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm, I hope that I can, hope I can just stick with it and maybe, um, you know, uh, maybe it'll help, it'll help my drawing and stuff as well. That's what, uh, right. that's really what I'm, you know, that's, that's, uh, there's another, there's another motivation behind it too. I want to keep drawing also. And so having, you know, having others that are, you know, uh, that have the, the drive and the spirit to do it, it keeps me going. You know, I get, I get just as much from student, you know, as, as I do. So. Well, that's awesome, dude. Because, like, I mean, I think the best thing that can teach you anything about yourself is by teaching other people around you. You know what I mean? Like, you can learn more by yourself through expressing what it is that you've picked up along the way. You know what I mean? Especially hearing it spoken outside of your head and to other people, it like it makes it resonates a lot differently. You know what I mean? When you can hear it outside of yourself, um, I, I agree with that completely, man. That's awesome. And it's cool that you're sharing that. You got a lot of great content on there for sure, man. Like, it's great. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'm I just look it. at, like, the screen grabs that are, like, the framework on the YouTube videos. And already I'm just like, that looks like something I need to learn. There you go. I think, um, you know, like, so I dropped out of college to tattoo um, in, in the year 2000. And so... In the year I always, uh, <laughs> the year Y2K, 2000. man. In the year yeah. 2000. Um, and so I thought, uh, I guess I always, I, I worked really hard on tattooing and, and, you know, and, but I always felt like there was this part that I was missing. And, um, you know, my, my bosses would always tell me like, you just tattoo more, just tattoo more, you know, that's all you need. And, um, and so, uh, I, you know, rejected that. I went back to school. Uh, but what I learned, I think, you know, like I spent a lot of time and a lot of money on school. Um, and so what I, what I feel like I, what I learned is that like, you know, it is, that that is true. You have to work. You just have to keep working. But there are some, there are some, so few, a few principles that you can adopt that you can start to like, you know, you can look at. And I think, you, you know, you have to, you have to, you have to do, you have to be rigorous. You have to do your research. You have to figure out what it is that, you know, you're, whatever it is you're interested in, be interested in it. And like, that's how you can, you know, gain some mastery. And that's how you can, I think, ultimately achieve some confidence and become who you are, you know, cause that's like, that's what we're trying to do, you know, but I don't, you know, I think just having your own bright ideas all the time, <laughs> you're just going to repeat so many, uh, so many mistakes that you know i don't know if they're avoidable necessarily all the time but there's there's so much you can gain by having a mentor by having you know people that you look up to and so um so yeah that's that's what i'm hoping that i can like you know i can give away what i what i got from school so tattooers feel more confident so they don't they, don't, they feel like they're um you know they're able to move through their journey of being a tattooer and not feel like like there's some bit that they missed that it's it's available to them um you know and it and it is a, a, the hard work is a part of it right tattooing more is definitely a part of it but you know it's interesting that you're bringing this up man because like one of the things that i wanted to talk about today was uh practice like uh, everybody always i always hear people saying i want to become a better artist i want to do more i want to i want to be able to make more art you know what I mean? But like, what exactly is the question that you're asking yourself? Like, why do you want to be a better artist? You know what I mean? Like, what is the ambition and the goal behind that question to begin with? You know what I mean? And it's very, it varies for everybody. You know what I mean? Some people want notoriety out of it. Some people want to experience more of their self through it. You know what I mean? Or be able to express themselves even better as a way of expressing yourself uh, non-verbally a little bit better. You know what I mean? That's one of my major goals for sure is to be able to like, invoke an emotion with a picture that that you don't really have to speak about like it can kind of like just ca it captures your own attention in its own sense you know what i mean so like that's one of the things that i always have been striving for forever 
it's actually one of the reasons that I love Caravaggio and stuff so much. You know what I mean? Like one of my biggest influences for sure is Caravaggio. And I think that that, that kind of dedication and skill is like definitely a master, you know what I mean? But like the guy was just doing what he wanted to do and learning his process through creating, you know what I mean? And just didn't stop practicing like you're talking about, you know what I mean? And I think that's, that's important. What do you guys think about that? Like, what do you guys think about that question of what it is that wants that you, you want to be a better artist for? I just keep wondering, isn't Caravaggio the one that got into a lot of bar fights? Uh, I think so. He's, yeah, he's, he's, he's notorious yeah. for a lot of different things that the church was like, it's cool, man. You just keep painting these pretty pictures and it's all good, dude. Yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, we he's don't an interesting that character. That, that never yeah. happened. He's a pretty nefarious wow. person from what I've heard. Yeah, from what I've read. Yeah, but his art, oh my God. Yeah, dude. But yeah, practicing, the purpose for practicing um, is different for a lot of people. I mean, some people want to be the next ink master. Some people yeah. just really, really, really want to make a pretty picture to hang up on their walls because they don't have the money to buy a pretty picture from an artist so they might as well make it themselves i love it dude yeah i think it's important i think when you're asking yourself why do you want to become a better artist it's important to identify like once you've already decided that you want to become a better artist and you're going to do what it takes take a minute to step back and start to identify the areas that you need to work on to be a better artist right is are you, do you need to be better at understanding color theory? Do you need to be better at your fundamentals? Do you need to be better at um, light placement, um, you know, and lighting effects? Do you need to be better at use your use of line or your amount of contrast? Uh, maybe it's your composition. You know, these are all different elements of art that can be focused on to improve something overall. And if you can't identify what it is, talk to someone else in the community, talk to another person, sit back and say, listen, I'm, I really want to improve. I really want to better myself. What do I need to work on? You yeah. know, I'm having problems seeing it. What can I do to improve? You know, what, what do you see consistently across a body of work that I need to improve upon? I think yep. a lot of people struggle with humbling themselves enough to be able to ask for help because, yeah. you know, there's a lot of, uh, let's face it, in the tattoo industry, there's a lot of toxic egos. Um, I mean, there's a lot of artists that want to share, but there's also a lot of people who are like, I'm great. I can't admit my faults like just like there isn't any other industry so having the ability to be humble to admit that you need improvement and that you want improvement in the first place is a really key element to becoming a better artist yeah uh, room for growth room for growth like not you can't go through your life as an artist thinking that you know everything because you might as well just quit if that's the case you know what I mean? yeah, you're not going to get any better if you already think you're the greatest. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I like I know a lot of artists who are like that. I mean, they're great artists, but I think sometimes you can achieve a level of notoriety or a certain amount of Instagram followers or make enough sales on your website or you know whatever do enough in your shop that you kind of feel like you don't need to work more um or to practice anymore so yeah mm -hmm. i think being humble is and admitting your faults is the first step to becoming greater or being able to listen to an interpretation of what it is that you could have done a little bit better yeah uh, but, accepting you know, critiques like, accepting critiques right or, you know, like we talked, the word community has come up in this conversation quite a bit. And I got to admit something. I mean, meeting Jason, Kier, and Bruno at the time that I did and speaking the jumbled mess of how I did something and how I thought I was making something, I had no idea what the, f 
frick it was that I was doing. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't explain it for anything. But then to hear them, especially Jason, kind of convey it back and with the proper terminology and stuff, I was like, oh, okay, I get it now. You know what I mean? But it wasn't without that community. It was with if it wasn't with that without that community, I wouldn't have been able to understand it in the way that I do now, for sure. And that was only a couple of years ago, even. You know what I mean? So it's important community is is like one of the foundations of it for sure like if you're trying to become Absolutely. a better artist if you're trying to become a better artist if you're trying to be more than what you feel like you can be or you are then that's an important step for sure and that's opening Definitely. up like medusa's saying that's opening up like medusa's saying for sure i got some people coming in who's that is that terrence what up dude how are you Cool, man. Somebody has donuts. Yeah, my buddy Terrence just showed up, and uh, he's got the dunk. He's got the dunk. The Dunkin' D's. I heard somebody say donuts. I want one. <laughs> Can I have one? Got what about if I just? Cream in there? What just, about just if pass uh, it through the magic window? I'm gonna just eat in front of you guys. Like we'll just make the rest of the show just me eating. How about that? And I'll get real close to the mic and stuff too. Mm. I live across the street from a 24 hour donut store. I raise you that challenge. I accept <laughs> it. <laughs> you can have a donut face off. You pro- your Our donuts are like probably way more thrown. gourmet, aren't they? What's that? The gauntlet has been thrown. All right, let me try it. Let's try it out. Hold on, I'll be right back. Let's see what we got. I, I will eat donuts till I throw up. Don't even try me. Oh my God. Holy shit, dude. For me, that would only take two. Medusa, we should make a thumbnail out of that. (laughs) 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 Like I'm trying to grow my maple bar utility belt. People have spoken. People have spoken. All right. Got myself a long (laughs) john. Oh, (laughs) man. Called it. (laughs) Good choice. Did you say you called it? <laughs> mm. There's no blueberry, Jason, but it'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, blueberry face. pancakes this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. And Terrence has got coffee too. He's like one up me. Well, I have coffee. I can't live without that. I'm going to ask you guys what you think about this picture so you don't have to look at me eating too much. Ooh. I dig it. Definitely. Um, it's very loose still. Uh, you guys see any spots that I need to kind of change or start making more of a focal point? Is the flower too stark against the skull? Yes. So how do I do that? Like, what do you think? Soften up some edges? Oh, I don't know. I'm not good at that. Ask James. Oh. So I, I feel like um, that if that if you were to, you know, leave that contour edge, you know, around the around the rose. Um, so that could have a nice bold outline, but then the, you know, the the, the lines of between each petal that could be softened slightly. Okay. Um, and, and that would like sort of, I think that would um, reflect what's happening in the skull a little bit more, you, you know, cause you have, you have a lot of like really beautiful, like shifts of the planes, like in the skull. Mm-hmm. So, um, so you're using tonal value and you've like, des- you've described like the side of the skull, the front of the skull, you know, all the, all of the various, like uh, all the planes are, are, you know, are rendered. And so, if you treat the rose in a similar way, but you give it that graphic outline, and then they sort of like, they relate to each other, um, I think, it, that way. Okay. And the other, the only last thing I would say is that on the, you know, on the jawbone of the skull, if you basically treat it like the way you've done um, with the, the upper palate, so the, the maxilla to the mandible, like, so they're, they, they both have the, that similar side that side plane uh-huh. and so if you just bring that value down along that side of it there. um yeah 
exactly yep. right there. Then I think it it would push that back behind the rose. And even though like, you know you kind of have like a like a a middle value on it, um, I think that would that could still really work with the really the really strong uh, positive negative like leaf that you have. Um, yeah. It's really yeah. I think it's it's a it's a great composition. It's, it's really classic. It's like we were yeah. talking about with the Cherry Creek earlier. It's like all those designs are so classic you know what i mean <laughs> they, they are beautiful we just live with them every day in the shops you know what i mean especially if you're yeah. an artist of a certain age yeah <laughs> if you're a tattooer of a certain age you lived with that stuff you walked past those racks every morning yep you know what i mean and you'd have to do it and it became this cliche thing because you were looking at all of it all the time and you were selling it all the time but for people who were you know like they don't come to the tattoo shop very often it is amazing looking because oh, all yeah. that stuff is really beautiful and super tattooable. And, um, yep. Yeah. I remember seeing that stuff and then getting into the other flash, like uh, Ed, Ed Lee, Edward Lee's flash and stuff like that, dude. And the whole David Bolt movement and things like yeah. that. You guys remember the David Bolt flash? Dude? It's like, <laughs> it was so crazy to see those varying degrees of like art styles in flash. You know what I mean? Because all that stuff looked great. But you know that stuff was like watered down quite a bit whenever it was time to tattoo it and stuff too. You know what I mean? But Cherry Creek was pretty much like, there it is. That's what you're gonna get. Clean, solid lines, clean, solid color. Boom! Every time you can look at the picture on the flash and look at the tattoo and be like, those are identical, bro. Uh, we are like a lot. Like at most of the shops I ever worked at, we always had like uh, you know line drawings in the filing cabinet. You pull that out and you run it right through the hecto machine and you know pick it and stick it and you know yep. <laughs> you didn't i don't know you just uh just rock it out you, you might have to rip the flash sheet off the wall so you could reference it you know uh-huh <laughs> yeah yeah i remember several times having the rack in my station you know what i mean just on a chair across the room for me <laughs> like the whole rack was gone people were like just copy it dude i was like oh shit you can copy it i forgot <laughs> i i worked at a shop in chicago where the all of the flash was it was like it was almost all sailor jerry and that was really interesting and kind of inspiring i you know like i'm not i'm i i respect old school um tattooing I, it's not something that i'm like super proficient at yeah. i did the portraits and stuff you know like <laughs> like people who wanted to do portraits but you know everybody else was sort of into you know like really like the you know the old school line work and just the the whip shading and like you know so I learned a lot. I think it was it was a it was a real learning experience. Well, it's the foundation of tattooing. You know what I mean? It's the foundation of a good solid tattoo. I mean, those applications are still applied to, you know, the even the most rendered kind of image in a tattoo. You know what I mean? Like that, that stark contrast. You know what I mean? The values, the 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 dark the dark to skin tone. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah, it's a fundamental. You're right. Is that what you said, Marisa? Fundamental. Yeah fundamentals yeah. yeah it's solid without it it wouldn't be tattooing as it is we know it at all you know what i mean absolutely i think it's interesting that you know it's like that's the that's really sort of uh um, foundational to the to the western notion of tattooing uh -huh. but, but sailor jerry really picked up a lot from japanese tattooing yeah even though he was like you know this raving racist you know he's like <laughs> uh <laughs> he really respected um you know it, it was one of the it was i'm not sure if, if it was horyoshi too but somebody you know i mean it was it was it was a tap you know japanese tattoo master who he corresponded with and and um and so again i think there was there was this real cultural exchange that happened yeah, I thought he, was, he, he was in <laughs> hawaii you know what i mean and yeah. so there was this connection and yeah i thought he opened like one of his shops in hawaii with uh somebody of japanese descent so that uh to collaborate uh -huh. with the cultural aspects of it Pazuo i mean what? i could be totally wrong though Pazuo gori is what i've been being told Pazuo gori is like who he opened up the shop with so oh, he collaborated with them yeah yeah well yeah i'm being told he's 95 years old still alive like that'd be fucking incredible to talk to that guy. Like, can you imagine that, dude? Oh wow! Somebody call him up. 
Get let's him call on. him up. Get him on the show. <laughs> let's see yeah. if he can. Let's see if he can zoom. Be like, can you zoom, man? Send a <laughs> raven. Thing? Send a raven. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just send four for one for each direction and see which one gets there first. This is down at the ports in Hawaii. Send a swallow. There you go. Make sure that uh, shit. I can't remember the joke now. Oh well. Anyways, yeah, man. What no, is it's the weight um, of an unladen swallow? There you go. That's the one. African Good. or European? <laughs> Perfect. You guys <laughs> fucking saved me. Thank you. Thank you, Amber. <laughs> no problem. I grew up on Monty Python. Fucking love Monty Python, man. It's so good, isn't it? Yep. All I want to know is what's your guys' favorite color? Green. No, blue. Pink. No, blue. <laughs> no one expects the enchanter's the name is Tim. Tim? Yeah. There are some of those who call him Tim. You can bring out your dad anytime, too. Bring out yeah. your dad? <laughs> bring out your dad. Your dad. <laughs> that must be my uh, Illinois accent. So. Dad bring can be. Bring out your daddy. Bring out your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's make it kinkier. <laughs> this show just went from Long John Donuts to daddies. <laughs> let's see what happens next. <laughs> Too cool, too well, Medusa is here, so I'm sorry, but that's not surprising. Sorry, guys. I have no problem, no qualms with that, Medusa. Bring it on. Oh, I uh, ironed, ironed my artwork this morning. I don't know if you guys saw that, but that was a successful attempt. So, uh, low heat setting, just like quick touches always make sure to be checking the temperature and everything i advise only people willing to try it out that are somewhat safe to try it but i think i successfully flattened out my waterlogged piece of art (laughs) let's check it out Uh, it's it's flatter let's see the art too oh oh that one yeah Oh, yeah, it's this thing so I've been well. working on. So rad. Yeah, dude, look at that. Oh, yeah. I want to print on that. that. I'm adding in and... the white highlights right now with um, a fine art pastel pencil. And, that's uh, awesome. When that's finished, when that's finished, let me know. I'd like to run prints of that. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is mixed media. Uh, it started out uh, as um, just kind of like a sketch. I was doing a lot of ballpoint pen on tone sketch paper when I was doing a lot of portraits. Um, going through my uh, month of portraits phase. And uh, this, uh, then I just started accidentally purposely using different medias. I was like, I'm going to do a quick wash of watercolor on this, you know, playing around without thinking about the fact that this is just sketch paper. So it easily got waterlogged and wrinkly. But then I was all like, I don't care. I want to do what I want. No rules. And then I uh, (laughs) kept painting on it and then going back and forth between ballpoint pen, pencil, charcoal, painting and eventually the paper was like wrinklier than uh well a wrinkly thing Uh, i'm sorry i lost the analogy there so yeah i ironed it and now it is uh stiff and flatter and ready for the ready for the white highlights go for it it's it's kind of fun doing that sometimes isn't it like just kind of throwing stuff together and yeah like just so. throwing caution to the wind and saying hey sarah sarah balls out we'll figure it out as we go along like mm-hmm. you know if there's any bridges we must burn well we'll burn them 
or cross them. Who knows? What's um, called the why they're burning? If you huh? want. Okay. What'd you say, Amber? I said, or we can cross them while they're burning. Heck yeah, just, dude. Just run really fast. Feet. Yeah, keep your feet toasty. Yep. I haven't yeah, done that yet. That's the only yeah. time you see me running. <laughs> I don't run. So if I'm running, you should probably run. Oh, running. Ew. Uh, hey. Ricardo, are you still doing? Yeah. <laughs> Are you still doing the 4.30 a.m. Uh, jogging? Yeah, I wake up at 4.30. I'm at the gym by 5. Uh, work out for an hour. And then, like, later on in the afternoon, sometimes I'll go for another run. So what time do you go to bed? <laughs> I mean, going to bed is one thing. Falling asleep is an entirely different another. beast. Falling so asleep do you is... have sleep in your schedule at all? Yeah, I do. I usually get about, uh, on average, about four hours, and then a long, a long night's sleep is like six to seven hours or so. So, my brain just don't don't shut off, man. My brain just don't stop. Uh huh. It just goes tick 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 tick. But I will say that every once in a while, I'll crash, like just crash out, and I'll sleep for like twelve or thirteen hours. Sometimes it's nuts. It's every once in a while. Every few months or so, it'll just be like I'm done. I can't talk. I, I don't. I don't know how to communicate. <laughs> pretty much, pretty nonverbal at that point. You know what I mean? But it's fun. Um, next time you're messing around with stuff like that, Medusa, if you want to play around, uh, I found that the moleskin sketchbooks, the paper. If you prime them, you can pretty much do almost anything you want to on the paper. Like you can oil paint on it and everything too. The key to, I found that the key to priming um, <clears throat> any of your surfaces really usually requires um, thinking about what you're doing in advance. Um, having yeah. a plan, which is <laughs> not something I am. Oh, I'm so bad at that. Yeah. Very good at it. So usually when I come to the point where I was like, I should prime this, I've already been halfway through it. Yeah. So good advice. I will try to remember to think about that before I start. Maybe just uh, prime a few pages, let them dry, and then like just keep it around in case you feel like messing around with it or something. You know what I mean? There you go. Good point. Yeah. There keeping a few pre primed canvases for uh, those uh, sparky moments is a very good idea. Feeling froggy? <laughs> feeling froggy? Feeling, feeling a little frisky? <laughs> frisky with your pencils yeah what do you guys have going on today any uh, big projects coming up I am filling an order for fingernail my side mm -hmm. hustle is press on nails oh okay my side oh, hustle do and you do yes. finger the nail art yes Oh, dude, that's so complicated. Just tiny I little. Any, yeah, I can paint nice. anything on a fingernail, but give me a big canvas and some paint and uh, um, in that. I, don't know. Mm -hmm. I tried playing with some of my friends' nail art things. The brushes are like, uh, I, I, I can't do it. Too small. Hairs. I'm pretty sure there's like three hairs in this brush. And I'm painting a set to go with a red and black Harlequin costume. Oh, cute. Yeah, all the, the guys here are like, we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> Actually. I, I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of do. Only a little bit. Well, though. Tell us about your nail art adventures, Ricardo. <laughs> drunken, usually. Yeah. Yeah, drunken and hanging out. I was like, let's do something. <laughs> Hell kinda, yeah. French Got tips it. for Ricardo. Got it. There you go. You got it, man. I'm actually working on trying to figure out a new convention banner. Oh, cool. Nice. Are you doing your thumbnails, Jason? <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm so I'm a big advocate of keeping my business card and my convention banner very similar so that as people are walking around the show. They can look at the card and be like, oh, 
this is this guy, right? That's and they don't have to like stop and guess and be like, oh, well, this card is cool. And I, I know the artist's name, but like, I don't see them any, maybe that's them. That looks kind of similar. Maybe. No, no, that's someone different. You know, it's like by keeping the designs very similar, um, it allows people to make that connection a little bit easier. So, and I redesigned my business cards in the beginning of the year, but I forgot to get a new convention banner that mimics the same, you know, new design. And now I'm sitting back thinking to myself, like, I really don't want to have to design new cards for next year. So is there some way I can take this new business card that I made and turn that into a convention banner? I mean, that makes sense. You can kind of just put it in a bigger canvas size on your uh, Procreator or Photoshop, can't you? I can. But the way that my card is oriented now is more landscape. So trying to rotate that isn't really going to look the same. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. I gotcha. So you now I have to go back through. Though, Jason. What? You can still have a streamlined look without it, you know, being necessarily true. the same. Very true. Yeah, and you could set it up. You could set it up to where it is landscape, a landscape banner instead of a vertical one, too, couldn't you? I could. I could. But then I would, I, I'm always that conscientious, like, booth partner. I like to make sure that I stay on my side and I only take up half of the booth. And, you know, I, I want to make sure everyone's got room for everything. And, oh, well, am I taking up too much table space? Because I can move some stuff. Oh, you know what? I'll just put my prints away. There you go. You've got plenty of room now. Um, you know, so I'm, I always like to make sure everyone's happy and everyone's got plenty of space for everything. So if I made the convention banner, but I, but I did it so that instead of being three feet wide by five feet tall, if I rotated that to make it five feet wide by three feet tall, which would theoretically work, I think it would take up too much room in a standard booth, which I believe is like eight foot. So it would take up over half of the width of the, the booth. So now I'm like, okay, well, maybe I could just like flip the whole thing on its side and I could do that. But then I like to have my name at the top of it and everything like that. So it's, it's going to be an adventure to figure it out proportionally to try to get something to work. Um, and I'm have, and I also want to try to take this like kind of traditional Japanese style design that I usually go with because I find it translates very well graphically. Yeah. Um, stands out very well. Line work can hold up on its own without any kind of value in there. So it can stand up as a great dynamic graphic image. Um, but I also want to try to combine that with a more Art Nouveau style and get some like more Art Nouveau or neo-traditional leaves in there. Maybe some like swirls in the backgrounds or like an Art Nouveau style frame. Um, so I'm trying to combine the two and it's turning out to be a little bit more tricky than I thought. Um, I got my tickets to Puerto Rico yesterday and I can't wait to come down to your booth and crop dust you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's I'm going to tell security not to let you in. Oh my God. That is awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna bring you. I gift you a present. <laughs> she would seriously just walk by and it's catch her. My essence. Too, <laughs> Jason, I was thinking about what you were just saying, and I um I had an interesting you know sort of light light bulb moment. Um, I was uh you know I was I was doing a tattoo. Uh, we were placing stencils and stuff, and uh, uh we decided you know the client wanted to put this piece on the hand right but then he wanted this date you know sort of above it um it was going to be with another tattoo or you know something it was something to that effect we decided to go with i put the hand stencil on first and then put the date on and it sort of it, it ended up working out really well and and we sort of we reverse engineered it in our heads like thought experiment like oh what if we put the date on and then tried to line up this you know hand piece with the date 
it would it would have been either impossible or we would have had to settle or something like that. And so I kind of I almost feel like your situation, you know, you really want this you want this banner, which is much more prominent to have a certain presence to look a certain way. Um, maybe if you just like, you know, like you're able to just go for that and make it make it however you really envision it. Your, maybe your business card will just simply follow, you know, and the new design for the business card will just sort of emerge out of that. But if you know, like if you're if you're trying to make the if you're trying to make this big banner conform to the little business card, it might be. So I might be totally off here. You know what I mean? They may not. These two sort of you know things may not equate. No, I, but I think you're right. I really do. I think you're you're one hundred percent right. Um, and that's actually what I've been playing around with in, yeah. in Procreate is I actually just dropped in on this like eighth scale document that I created in Procreate. I just dropped in this um, this business card like graphic with like waves and everything. And I was like, okay, what can I move around? What can I shift? How can I get this to fit right on this? And I think you're right. I think just by coming up with a new design that's going to be more banner oriented and then reflecting that even if i have to get new cards made that's fine um because i'm actually running low on them anyway so I should probably know. order more the time. um and then it can be a collector's item right you can be like yeah this was his 2022 business card mm -hmm. here do you <laughs> have yeah this that's is awesome. a cross message version yeah yeah apparently <laughs> <laughs> I need to get on business cards, man. I don't have any. I have none. No business cards. But I think I need to do them. How are you doing I mean, business without business cards? I know, right? I kind of just come to work and make it happen, I guess. And then I just stick with the good old-fashioned print out all of my information on address labels and slap those address labels onto playing cards. Throw them out like Gambit. Nice. <laughs> it's it clever. Rain. It's fun. Yeah. Um, they're a different shape than business cards, and they always stick out. I always try to find fun packs, like sparkly gold packs. Or uh, last time I went to um, uh, I went to a convention at a casino, and they had a bunch of playing cards in the gift shop that had like animal facts on them, wildlife facts, survival in the wilderness facts and stuff like that. So I got those. They were super fun. People hang on to stuff like that. Whereas just a regular old business card, they might look at it, think I'll log the information in my brain and then toss it out real quick because it's hogging up space in their wallet. But when you get something flashy and fun and make it almost interactive, um, They'll, they'll they hang on to it. Uh, I used to have business cards that were not even cards at all. I just made like little pocket zines of my art when it was first starting. And uh, I would hand those out as my business cards. And uh, everybody thought that it was uh, I was actually giving them like artwork because I guess it looks like it when it's a little pocket book with each page being my artwork. And then they would give me stuff in exchange, like at conventions. They're like, no, 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 that's just my business card. And they're like, thank you so much. Here, have this. And it's like, okay, thanks. But uh, yeah, there's so many interesting ways to make business cards super fun and interactive besides just being like a card. Mine, I think it's just going to say business on it. Just business of the QR code or something, you know? Just plain simple, the most simple kind of font I can find. I'm going to recommend the movie American Psycho. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's reference yeah. this uh, scene yeah. about business cards, and that'll help, you know, yeah. inspire you, the tasteful thickness or, of it. The yeah, yeah. Way it's type. <laughs> type font. I wonder what kind it is. <laughs> that that are just make you like you know crazy as hell and like anxious over something like a business card it's crazy mm. that was a good movie though 
Like yes, it was. All right, so I'm playing around with this flower still. Let me show you guys real quick. I think I, I made some adjustments on the skull, the outline, the line weight. I'm playing around with line weight. And I'm just kind of washing in some color real fast too. Let's see what you guys think real quick. All right. Uh, we get this guy in the center screen. Man, my iPad is being weird. All technology is being weird right now. Sweet. Yeah. Threw a thicker line around the perimeter of the skull. Yeah. Had it together a little bit more. Made that uh, perimeter line around the flower a little bit larger too to kind of keep the separation. Keep them separated. Yeah. I think it. I think it. I think it's like. It's much more cohesive, you know what I mean? It it doesn't mm -hmm. it, it also doesn't feel like you've really, you know, it doesn't feel changed, uh like, you know, like the spirit of it is still present. So it's like it's exactly the same thing, but but now they those two elements really work together like like really, really well. Like Thanks, so, man. I, I really like it. Killer, thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Oh, it's yeah, you're gonna you're gonna knock it out of the park, Ricardo. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated, man. Well, guys, I'm going to have to get ready for my appointment coming up pretty soon. I was wondering if we could take a moment and kind of walk around the room and let everybody know that's watching how to get a hold of you. Um, Amber, if we can start with you, that'd be great. Sure. I'm Amber Morgan. You can find me on Instagram at Amber Morgan and on Facebook at Looking Glass Inc. Awesome. Thank you for joining us this morning. I appreciate you jumping in no problem it was great time cool james can we go ahead and go over to you buddy sure i'm james wisdom um uh, you can find me on mondays reinventing the tattoo drawing for tattooers uh, i also tattoo at artistic skin designs uh, in indianapolis so come and see me if uh you need a tattoo need a cover-up something like that um thanks ricardo for having me this is uh this is a it, it's a pleasure so, yeah, man. Thank you for joining. I, I appreciate you uh, taking time. Thank you. Medusa, you want to give us a holla? Not a crop duster? <laughs> Hi, <laughs> I'm Medusa. Um, I won't actually crop dust your booth. Um, and you can find me at medusaslays.com. Bye. Cool. See you. Thanks for joining. Jason, the man, the myth, the legend. I'm Jason Leeser. You can find me on Instagram at Philly Inc. Um, you can also find me on Sunday afternoons at 1 p.m. Eastern time for the Skill Building Sunday Drawing Group hosted here on the Reinventing the Tattoo Network. Um, and I usually also try to jump into the James Wisdom Drawing for Tattooers um, drawing group as well, Monday mornings. So you can usually catch up with me then as well. Yeah, cool, man. Cool. My name is Ricardo Servant. Uh, thanks for joining us on Tuesday mornings, Tuesday Fields. Jason, Medusa, James, Sandberg, thank you so much for dropping in. Uh, everybody who's watching, everybody in the chats, thank you for, for coming in and saying what's up and giving some questions and talking to us. So uh, you guys take it easy. Until next week, I'll see you all later.